So say you're this guy. His name is Marcus, and Marcus is in Latin class. It's whiteboard day for Marcus, and he's supposed to be conjugating the verbs on the white space in front of him. But if you're Marcus, you get distracted by the amazing possibilities of drawing that whiteboards possess. So instead of doing what he's supposed to be doing, Marcus starts doodling. Even though he could be drawing some stuff that he invented in math class, he knows that he should be trying to disguise his boredom doodling. So he invents a new type of doodling, Latin doodling. There are lots of cool things that you can do that are Latin related, like all of these columns, or what really happened when Julius Caesar died. And of course, there are a bunch of palindromic things that you can do, like the magic square that reads the same backwards and forwards and upwards and downwards, and it's pretty much just magical whatever you look at it. And then there's this SPQR thing, except it goes vertically and horizontally and diagonally. Anyway, these things are enough to help entertain Marcus for a little while. Marcus's te Latin teacher is saying something about the thermi, which sounds like a pirate was about to say thermometer and then saw one of his piratey friends around and wanted to say hi. By half listening to the teacher and half continuing to doodle, he learns that the thermi are the Roman baths, which, upon thinking about it, creeps him out. Who'd want to be in a giant steam room with a bunch of old naked Roman guys anyway? So he decides to just keep on doodling onward until it's the end of class, and the only thing that he got away from the class is that there's new types of Latin doodling. Later in the day, Marcus takes a bath, and all of the complicated and stressful things about Latin surround his thoughts. Eventually, he's so tired and angry that he goes into a deep, deep sleep. When he wakes up, he's confused. Why is everything so white? Am I in a video? What is happening? And then a voice comes. Hello, Marcus. I've been expecting you. My name is Neptune. Marcus pretty much freaks out and starts running away, but Neptune says, Stop! I was sent here to help you. I have seen that you are having trouble with Latin class, and you do not like the Roman baths. Marcus is really scared. How does this guy know how bored I was? Is he a creeper? Is this the Matrix? Listen, Marcus. If I took you to the Roman baths, you'd understand them. So despite Marcus's hesitations, he decides to go ahead and follow him. Now let me give you a little information about the baths, says Neptune. Now Italy is a pretty warm place. For years, Italians enjoyed the comforts of hot springs near volcanic areas. In Greece, there's a well-known bath system with pools, tubs, foot baths, and even showers. Like most everything, the Romans took what the Greeks had done and made it better, and transported the warm baths to places that didn't even have hot springs. Marcus, are you listening? I have never really seen them before. I thought the bats were just cramped, dirty little pools in the ground, Marcus says. As you walk in, you see all sorts of people. Businessmen, town folk, poor-looking people, women, and even more. You pay a small fee to get in, and Marcus is a little excited, but still nervous to see what is inside. You walk into the bats and come into a small room filled with little cubbies. This is the apoditarium, says Neptune. This is the place where you leave all your belongings and other stuff that you have. I've hired a slave for now to watch our stuff. Can I go home now? Do I have to stop my feet like three times or something? Or silence! Now listen, Marcus, I've put up with all your complaining too long and I now must put a silencing curse on you. Beware the power of duct tape! And you do, and you stay quiet for the next 45 minutes. This is the palestra, the exercise room. Here you can play games, run, and stay healthy. Before your run, you're supposed to put on oil that you can scrape off with the stridulus to scrape off all of the dirt captured during your workout. Marcus just wants to get away from Neptune, so he starts running away from him until he gets into a pretty steady pace. Running in the palestra is actually pretty stressful, even if it would be a lot easier to breathe with that duct tape pressing against his mouth. You leave the palestra and head to the reason you came here, to visit the baths. This is the tepidarium, the warm baths. After this, we can either go to the frigidarium, the cold baths, or the caldarium. You think that it's nice that the Romans give you a variety of options, and you decide to try them all. Each one is different, but good for its own reasons. Marcus actually gets to have some interesting conversations with the different Roman people, still while relaxing. This all seems nice and all, until you realize that you're hanging out in a modern type of scene 2,000 years ago. You rub off your duct tape and call for Neptune. How did the Romans build these baths? How did they get hot water? Who's in charge of running these baths? How many baths are there? I'm so glad you're asking questions now and not complaining. Do you see what relaxing and wearing duct tape can do for somebody? Now, for your first question. The Roman baths were built in a very specific way in order to, for hot water and air to flow through. If you look in the basement, you would see a 
slaves tending to a very big fire. This fire creates lots of hot air, which moves through chambers underneath the floors, winding through support columns and tiles. The hot air moves upwards to heat the floor tiles, walls, and room, and the chimneys let some of the hot air out. There were people that ran the baths, obviously the slaves that helped people in the palestra and the hypocaust system, but also people named Balnatories who helped with the running of the baths and stayed there and made people leave when they closed. As for how many baths there were, in the Roman Republic, it was a luxury for the rich. However, with the expansion of the empire, baths became open to all people. At the end of the 4th century AD, there were about 11 public baths and 926 private baths. Marcus can't believe it. He went through a long informational speech without doodling, and actually learned something. Come on, Neptune says, there's still a few things left to explore. You and Neptune check out all of the other things that baths have to offer. You get a nice massage after leaving the baths. You go for a swim in a larger swimming pool called the Natatio, and then a dry hot sauna room called the Laconium. There are a bunch of cool other things you can do around the building, like a library a poetry recital, musical performances, and the lectures on philosophy. Finally, you and Neptune settle down at the Thermopolium, sort of like a restaurant, for a nice meal. Everything's to be, everything seems so great when...